Thank you, uh, Amir. Um, in this session, yeah, I wanted to uh, discuss a little bit uh, on the edge and in particular the, the SDN or, or what do we do with respect to, to automation uh, in that uh, sense because we believe there is a bit of a, a thing that we have to take into account in order to see, okay, how do we uh, architect uh, our solutions to actually get the benefit of full automation uh, and, and all the, with, uh, together with all the edge attributes that are uh, important. Now, let's first uh, discuss a little bit uh, the edge or what it is. I'm actually not going to say what the edge completely is, <laughs> but I, we call it as a new meet point, right? And of course, this picture is mainly focused on service providers, right? Because there is uh, different forces within the service provider environment that uh, drive that. So on one end, you see the cloudification from the radio elements, you see cloudification of the core elements for with respect to 5G uh, deployments. You also see that uh, potentially edges are deployed for data localization or for uh, real-time uh, use cases and so on and so forth. But also, and what is not on this slide, you also can see edges appear within the enterprise. And a lot of what I'm going to say here is also applicable over there, right? But the pictures and the context that we have here is mainly within the service provider environment at this stage, right? Now, what makes the edge special, right? Um, I, first of all, I think we have to admit that there is no edge without a network, right? So the network is an essential component uh, to actually connect the edge to the rest of the, the network. But more important is typically edges are characterized with smaller footprints and the uh, resources that are uh, going to be consumed uh, by that uh, applications are typically uh, very, let's say, small and, and you have to design in order to take that into account, right? So that means that if you would consume a CPU for infrastructure that cannot be used for an application, it's actually bad from a TCO point of view, right? And these are type of things that we took into account the other attribute which we believe is very important is that the edge should be self-contained, right? Meaning that if you have a disconnect from the rest of the network, the edge should still operate the way that it would be operating as if it was deployed in a central place, right? So in other words, I we typically uh, discuss about self-contained uh, management, the fact that uh, you want to actually optimize for a footprint at least from the things that are not relevant uh, for, for the business as such, right? So meaning I lower the footprint as much as possible for all the infrastructure components, and as a result, deliver that such that your application can consume all the resources that are required as much as possible. Now, let's see how we connect those edges uh, towards the rest of the network, right? because and I always, so we come from the networking side of things, right? So it's always good to see what and, and how we dealt with that. Because if you look to networking today, if you look to big service providers, they have 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, some even 50,000 routers. And you could say they're all distributed. So they're all somehow a bit of an edge uh, element. And what did we do? We actually connected them in a seamless way together, right? And that's what we called uh, initially seamless MPLS, right? and what we call these days seamless segment routing, right? So basically, you basically take a device, you give it the right configuration, and all of a sudden, it gets connected to the rest of the network, and we can deliver services uh, on top of that infrastructure. And if you look to the management uh, aspect of it, uh, so there is still a central, let's say, management, whether you call it a management system or orchestration, it's actually, I would say, loosely coupled with that element, because if that management system disappears or you have a disconnection, your edge continues to operate without any problems, right? And if you have uh, rerouting uh, aspects, you have failures somewhere connected to your edge, it will sort itself out in a completely distributed way, right? Now, if you look at the edge itself, right, and, and we have to, uh, we, we want to connect it to the rest of the network, I believe it would be good to actually use the same principles that we have been, uh, let's say, uh, defining and actually been implementing because I believe that most of you who have deployed, let's say, an, an, an MPLS or an IP infrastructure 
have used and are using that seamless MPLS framework. So the, the key question is, would it not be good? And what do we have to do in order to leverage that same framework that we all uh, like and love uh, and, and are using in order to actually connect those various uh, applications and those various edges together, right? Now, if we then take a step back and say, okay, because typically edges, they come from, I would say, the data center type of environment, right? And if you look, that, if you look to the way that that environment is being set up, there is some uh, connectivity. So if you look to the, the different elements over there, so you typically have your compute stack, you have your cloud manager, and as I mentioned before, I, before I, these days, all of these applications that are living on the edge are typically cloud native type of applications. So, and as a result, you see that Kubernetes is kind of the default, uh, the de facto way of actually deploying that, right? So you have your, uh, I, what we call a cloud manager, although it actually lives on the same compute. And if you then look at how we connect those, those, that to the network, so we have an external networking component, and typically that is a separate entity, which we call, uh, in most of the cases, a fabric manager, and you have this interface in between, right? And what does this interface do? It actually tells from the application side what the networking has to do in order to comply with the requirements for the application, right? So as such, if we look to the edge, you see that we need to get the same components in place and the same uh, building blocks in place to actually deliver the similar experience. And, and then the question is, how do we do that? Right, because we are actually distributing those components further inside of the network and we actually have to connect them, right? And some people will say, hey, I manage my uh, edge locations from a central component. I bought my fabric manager and my cloud manager is central and I'm going to connect them uh, uh, remotely and manage them remotely, but you can already imagine that if there is a disconnect within the wide area network to that environment, you don't have that self-contained operation, right? And that's why we said, okay, we have to actually look at this a bit differently, and we believe that those components that actually are delivering that interface between your cloud stack and your networking stack has to be localized, right? So in other words, the interaction between your applications, let's say your 5G core or your radio or maybe some other applications, they need to uh, basically expose some networking requirements that they have and they need to be then uh, instantiated onto the networking devices that are attached to it, right? And as a result, what we are actually saying is that your SDN component that does that, the best architecture is actually to localize that within the edge environment that is uh, deployed for that particular location, right? Now, I think you would all say that is, that is a, a good and the right thing, and, and then the question is, how do we do so, right? Because remember from the beginning, footprint is extremely important, right? And I also have to say that networking is networking, and the domain expertise is very important, right? But you can actually do two things. You can either say, I take my networking management stack and I deploy it separately from that Kubernetes environment, right? But that means you have to take into account high availability, you have to take into account all the aspects on how you actually manage that, uh, that infrastructure. And as such, what you will typically see is that the amount of footprint that you need to do so is not uh, appropriate to actually deal with that environment. And as such, what we actually did is we took a different approach and we said, okay, let's endorse Kubernetes to its full extent and let's not focus on trying to reinvent the wheel. Let's basically build that management of that networking within the Kubernetes environment and actually leverage to a full extent. Now, there's different ways you can do so and I will I go more into that, but Basically, what we believe is when you want to actually focus on the, on the edge and whether you want to uh, deploy that in a distributed way, deploy that within the Kubernetes environment because you actually benefit from a number of things that actually that environment offers you for free. And as a result, the footprint to deploy so 
is extremely low. We are even talking, just to give you a sense, of less than a virtual CPU that we consume for this application. You can already see how interesting that is for a number of people, right? Because you don't actually burn CPUs to actually use, uh, that can be used for basically application workloads. Now, if you then look at, okay, what do you do and how do you do, how do, you do so? So the Edge Network Controller is actually the product that we actually launched in Mobile World Congress to do so, right? And I said that yesterday, there is two ways you can deploy within Kubernetes. There is one way to say, I deploy on top, and there's another way that we say, you deploy within, right? And the deploy within is actually the thing that actually makes us lower this footprint to a full extent. But there is also a secondary uh, attribute to that, which is you leverage the full ecosystem that Kubernetes brings to you out of the box, and we don't actually have to reinvent the wheel, right? Now, before going into a bit more detail on that, depending on uh, the time, is that you see that networking, as I said before, is special, right? So people will say, okay, if I deploy within a Kubernetes environment, now I all of a sudden give all my uh, API access to all the people. And the answer is no, because Kubernetes offers you a full RBAC capability to actually say which person has access to which resource, and you can actually, with very fine-grained policy, define who can do what inside of the cluster. So we can actually build a complete multi-tenant environment to actually consume your network resources the way you believe your operational team has to uh, manage and operate that environment. The second thing is then, eh, because you, you basically, when you deploy such an environment, you have basically two sets of people. You have people that design, that deploy, uh, that basically define what are my networking constructs that are relevant for my users. So, and they deploy, for example, the templates that people can consume. And then you have people who actually consume and actually operate the network, and you want to give them the tools to actually separate those two duties, right? And you want to give them the tools that, that they uh, love within, within the ecosystem, and you see that uh, when they want to deploy a, a set of DevOps tools or SecOps tools and stuff like that, and you want to leverage the ecosystem that Kubernetes brings you, you want to allow them to use that plethora of capability that is, that is available over there. Now, <clears throat> typically, also people think this is purely configuration management, right? Because if you look to GitOps, typically it is you check in your file into Git, you version it, you run it through a CI CD pipeline, and all of a sudden, uh, when the testing says good to go, you can deploy. Actually, the edge network control is not purely about configuration. There is also the assurance component into it, right? So what does that mean? And so that means that actually it's not just to say, hey, it's deployed and it's done. And it's actually another thing that maybe is not clear for you. It's completely done in an intent or declarative way, meaning that it's a full closed loop system. So that means that if someone does a change on the configuration, we will be notified and we can actually auto remediate or actually notify the operator that your configuration was not aligned. But more importantly, it's not just, okay, my configuration is deployed. You actually want to see what is the real state that my networking components are in and get the visibility of what's going on. Is the health of that configuration, is the health of that system okay? Is it working with the right properties that my applications uh, want. And so you want to get the visibility and the assurance to actually see what is actually going on. Also, that part is actually covered, and we are leveraging the full uh, Kubernetes uh, ecosystem again to do so. So in other words, we look at the full telemetry that the devices expose. We actually uh, uh, expose that through a permission scraper that you can actually use. You can look at the events local into the cluster, take the actions that your, uh, that your application requires in order to do local remediation, and then you can send the data to a central data lake to do further processing, right? So that means if you are interested in certain configuration aspects or certain uh, AI or ML 
uh, applications that you want to deploy, uh, you can do so, right? So in other words, it's not just configuration because typically GitOps is seen purely in a configuration uh, scenario. It's also assurance, visibility, and so on and so forth. So it's actually all the aspects that we believe are relevant to actually manage and operate a networking stack. So this is my uh, last slide. So as I said yesterday, and I was advocating, Kubernetes as a stack has a lot of attributes that we can use. And as an automation platform, it's highly extensible. So we are on a track. And so Edge Network Controller is one of that implementation that actually is leveraging that whole framework to make our networking components consumable, agile, automated, and then very efficient, meaning with a very low footprint that is actually tailored for the edge. And with that, I would like to thank you. And if you really would like to uh, see this in action, I would welcome you to our booth because all of this is actually available uh, for you to actually go into more details. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? Questions? Because we have time. So I'll tell you, uh, now, now is the time in which I need to Try and try and uh, <laughs> sure, sure. let the time go by because uh, it would be because good we to have get virtual uh, uh, participants. Then uh, we need to start exactly on time because they cannot join earlier. Uh, because if if you look at the system, it doesn't open for them to join before the time. There's a question, I think. So uh, there's a question. Great. A okay. Can we get a microphone? Do you have a microphone? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> So, um, Can you I'm just say name and company? Yeah, I'm, I'm Simon. I'm coming from Telefonica, Germany. Um, right. I'm responsible for the backhauling. And from the network perspective, looking at what you just presented, I'm asking myself, what does that mean for my backhaul network? Do I need to reserve now space in my racks for, for that Kubernetes and the Edge network controller? Is there already a product for that, or is that all in the cloud? No, so, so first of all, I think what we, what we are trying to do with, with, this, with the Edge Network Controller is, so you're going to deploy an Edge Cloud of some sort, right? That can be, uh, let's say, a private instance, like you take an OpenShift, eh, or like Wind River has a nice tag, but you can also have hyperscalers, like a this, so all of this works with AWS, uh, Google Antos, and so on. So you will deploy uh, one of those stacks, right? And what we are actually saying is, in order to then connect the network to it, the edge network controller, you deploy within that stack, but you use your regular equipment that you would use in the backhaul, right? So there is no new equipment that you would have to deploy. You basically take your backhaul gear that you have, you connect the edge to it, and now all the things that your application needs, so for example, think about I want to set up a new slice, right? So your UPF needs a new slice. You basically can now automate the configuration of your backhaul gear aligned with your application in a completely automated way. That's, for example, what you see. So there is no new equipment required. So you use whatever you have. And, but you actually leverage that cloud environment to host the edge network controller upon. And then you get all of these benefits that I was uh, mentioned. OK, great. Mr. Microphone, oh, yeah, great, thanks a lot. I guess I will have to visit your booth. Uh, that all sounds super interesting for me, coming from the networking, coming from the backhaul. Um, nice world, see you later.